what is it with you? All at once a bit of contact? Is that so much to ask for? All you do is lie there, like a corpse on a mortuary slab. How dare you? Well, what do you expect if you keep pawing at me like a piece of meat? I'd get more response from a piece of meat. Good morning, Katrina. Did you know it takes 19 muscles to frown and only 12 to smile? Just think of all that energy you could save yourself if only you put your mind to it. Messages, notes, post. Ooh. Hun's been busy during the night, Sarge. First patient waiting. <coughs> what, over the top, Sarge, in no man's land? Only adult in this family. Yeah, finish with the notes, yeah. Okay, I'll bring them in in a minute. Tell him, Mr. Tompkins, most men have to be dragging the hair by their wives for their medical checkups. Well, a Formula One car needs the occasional pit stop, right? Okay. We can get those on. I don't think there's anything to worry about, Aunt Julie. Your uh, blood pressure is a bit high. You been overdoing it at work? You need a holiday? You know what it's like. <laughs> I do indeed. So, no stress, no extra worries? No. Last time I saw you, your blood pressure was normal. So is this really a pit stop? Or is it something else? Is there anything you want to talk about? Anything at home? Look, Mrs Tompkins, you do seem more stressed than usual. These things at home. It's me wife, Barbara. I don't know what's come over. She's changed. She doesn't want me near her. We haven't... Been close with each other? No. Not for quite some time. I'm worried about her. She never wants to go out, just stays indoors. She only leaves the house under sufferance. I catch her crying and, and she tries to hide it. I, I try to, you know. To be honest, I don't know how much more I can take. The rows and the... It's getting me daughter Becky down as well. She hardly speaks to either of us. Spends all the time up in a room on that blasted computer. Wish I'd never bought the flipping thing. Yeah, well, kids are very sensitive to friction between parents. Probably doesn't know what else to do. Look, Mr. Tompkins, I don't want to speculate, but it seems to me that your wife is a bit low at the moment. Do you think it might be worthwhile me talking to her? Look, why don't you ask her to come into the surgery and I'll try to help her? It's not like me to... Sorry. No, oh, talking about it is the first step. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll go on now and tell her. Ask her? Yeah, ask. Hello, Riverside Surgery. Could I speak to Dr Elliot, please? 
It's his mother. Oh, hello, Mrs. Elliot. I'm afraid he's in with a patient at the moment. Oh, it's just... Would you like to leave a message? It's... Is it urgent? I... Look, hold on, I'll put you through. Yes? Um, it's your mother on the line. I'm with a patient, Katrina. Yes, I know. Um, but she sounds, I don't know, worried. Can you excuse me a moment? Put her through. Hello, Mum. Hello, Mark. I hope this isn't a bad time. It is, actually. I'm with a patient. Well, I... Uh... Can it wait till lunchtime? I... Yes. Yes, it's not that urgent. I'll speak to you later. Great. Bye. You've done what? It's just an appointment with the doctor. You've been discussing me? Your doctor's appointment and you've been discussing me? Well, we've got to do something, haven't we? Do you really want to live like this? You can't talk to me. Perhaps you can talk to him. You had no right. I had every right. You must see what this is doing to Becky. If you won't do it for me, do it for her. What were you thinking of? I don't care if it's my mother, Elvis or the Pope. When I'm with a patient, you don't put calls through. Is that clear? I'm aware of what my job is, Dr Elliot. I wouldn't normally put a call through, but she sounded like she really needed to talk to you. I thought you'd want to take it. Well, in the future, don't. Hello, Riverside Surgery. Ah, oh, hi. Can I speak to Dr Elliot, please? Uh, yeah, hold on a minute. I'll just see if he's available. It's Dr Kendall. Uh, it's for you. Dr Kendall, now will you be taking this call, seeing as it isn't actually God? Put it through to my room, will you? Dr. Kendall, good morning. Sorry to call you at work, but I was concerned about your answer phone message yesterday. Yeah, sorry about that. Well, is there a problem? Look, we should talk about your decision. Can I call you later? Morning surgery and all that? OK. Excellent. Bye. OK, bye. Your husband says that you're finding things more difficult at the moment. And he says that you're not going out as often as you used to. Have you any idea what's caused this change? OK, um... How are you sleeping? Are you finding it harder to drop off to sleep? Or, or do you keep waking up too early? Have you had a bereavement recently? Look, has anything happened, or have you had any bad news that's made you so unhappy? Mrs Tompkins, I can't help you if you don't answer me. Look, I promise you that nothing you say will embarrass me. Truly. But if you're finding this difficult, we have an excellent female doctor. I'll ask her to see you if you like. I mean, if it would make things easier. I'll, uh, I'll go and have a word with her, hmm? How are the stats coming along? Slowly. Oh, well, it's Mac's turn next month. Yeah, right. Helen, I'm sorry, do you think Helen's you... not here. She's been eaten by the paperwork monster. No, I have a patient with me and I'm getting absolutely nowhere and I wondered if you'd see her. I think you'd be better suited. Mac, this is my admin day. I'd really like you to see her, Helen, please. Can't you see her? Look, you read a note and I'll send her through, OK? Ma All right, I'll see her, but I'm getting off on time today. Of course. Thank you. Dr Maguire notes you're very low, tearful, not going out. Some things are very difficult to talk to a man about. My husband wanted me to come. He had no right to talk about me. He just takes control, thinks he can fix things. Never thinks about the consequences. Is there a problem? OK, let's start with the easy stuff. How are you sleeping? Well, I'm not really. I can't get to sleep. 
For how long? Weeks, months. Have you lost weight? Yes. Would you let me examine you? If there's a problem, and there clearly is one, you're not helping yourself by keeping it inside. That'll only make matters worse. Remember, anything you tell me here remains confidential. I'm sorry. I can't do this. It's... Oh, thanks. Ah, you finished with Mrs. Tompkins? Matt, could you explain to me exactly why I'm more suitable for dealing with a depressed woman than you are? Well, um... As I tried to explain to you, today's my admin day. A day that I need just to get through all the paperwork I'm supposed to do during the month. Not to mention the stats, the drug budgets and the outcome monitors. Now, you don't see patients on your admin day, so why should I? But you have trouble accepting that fact. So you railroad me into seeing Mrs Tompkins and what do I find? A tearful, depressed woman who has trouble talking about what's depressing her. Now, forgive me, Mac, but what's so difficult about that that you felt I needed to be involved? Hang on a minute, Helen. A tearful, we... neurotic women automatically passed on to me these days. When did that become my speciality? If you let me get a word in Edways, I said I thought you might be more suitable. Oh, because she was awkward and blubbing? No! Well, it feels like it. I'm repeatedly put upon. Oh, Helen will deal with that. She won't mind. Awkward patients, drug budgets, monthly stats. That is gross misrepresentation. Is it? Yes. Look, Mrs Tompkins was finding it hideously difficult opening up to me, and I thought you were more suitable. And as for the rest, I am scrupulously fair with allocation. <laughs> I wish I could turn Mac off like that. Is it Pete? No, Beth. Why can't you just take a hint and leave me alone? I think she really wants to try and make things up with you. I'm sorry? Oh, I thought you knew she came in to see me. We had a, a chat. A chat? Yeah. About me? I think she's just so desperate to get... Oh, I know how desperate she is. I don't want to hear about it. I suppose you were hoping I wouldn't find these. So is this your life now? Rubbish. Just jumbled to be left out in the rain. Why won't you talk to me? If it gets any frostier between those two, we'll all be skiing to work. Can you imagine Mac on skis? Everything OK? Uh, yeah. yeah. Good. This place is going downhill. Hi, is Dr Elliot available, please? Um, I'm afraid we're closed for lunch. Um, do you have an appointment? I wanted to catch him for lunch. Um... Ah, oh, hello, Mark. I was just passing, I, I wondered. Um, not here. I'll get my coat. <sighs> Don't you two think this has gone on long enough? Well, you're going to have to talk to each other eventually. But for goodness sake. Both as bad as each other. Isn't this above and beyond the call of duty? I needed a straight answer. Now, are you going to level with me? Straight to the nitty gritty then. Look, I'm giving up the counselling. I think it's too soon. I think I've taken this as far as it can go. All right. Are you finding the, the coping techniques still working? Yes, mostly. The things I saw in Kosovo. The things that were done, they will never stop affecting me. Hell, I don't want them to stop affecting me. But if I have the old flashback, I want to be able to handle it without coming running to you. Sure, sure. I have to move on, and I think I'm ready to do that. OK, but... <laughs> Look, Riverside is a growing practice. There's a, it has great potential. A senior partner's going to be retiring soon, and if I play my cards, 
Well, it's a big opportunity for me. Look, can I introduce a note of caution here? Which is exactly why I have to move on. I'm sorry, but it's the way I feel. It's been a long time since I've wanted anything this much. What do you mean, exactly? Riverside. I want the Riverside practice, and I'm going to get it. Yes? It's Mrs Tompkins. She wants to see you again. Where's Mac? He's still in with Mrs Vibo. OK, send her through. If it's a difficult time, only you did say. No, it's OK. Come in, sit down. I took my daughter's advice. She's 15. 15 going on 40. And I feel as if I've put those years on her over the last few months. So I'm going to say it now. I'll say it quickly or I'll never say it at all. I can't control myself. I keep wetting myself. I'm a 42 year old woman and I keep wetting myself. I can smell it. And if I can, so can everyone else. I have to pad myself. I can't bring myself to buy adult ones, so I buy children's ones instead. It's so embarrassing. I can't talk about it, not even to Gordon. Married to a 42-year-old baby. This is something we can deal with. I threw my clothes away. Anything short. Anything that would show a damp patch. Anything that would give away the amount of padding I have to wear. Gordon found them. He doesn't understand. He doesn't know. If I tell him he'll leave me, I know he will. He'll be disgusted. I'm disgusted. He won't be able to cope with this, I know he You don't know that. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can sort this out. If you want to bring your husband back with you, I'll speak to you both. Explain it's not the end of the world. Thank you, but I think I really should tell him. All right. Good luck. And Jude? What exactly did Beth say? Do you want to do this here? It's a good place as any, seeing as my private life has become public property. Beth just said how much she misses you, how much she knows she hurt you when... When she slept with my husband. I can't believe that she discussed that with you. But Beth couldn't leave it at, oh, I'm sorry for hurting her. No, she had to go the whole hog. Jude, I'm sorry. I thought I was helping. I should have told you sooner. You shouldn't have talked to Beth in the first place. I bet you couldn't resist every salacious detail. How would you feel if your private life was all over Riverside? Be happy with that, would you? Oh, yeah. Oh, right. I don't want to hear it, Helen. Please sit down. There's something I want to discuss with you. I've been begging you to talk to me for the last six months. What's so different about today? Gordon, this is so difficult. I, I didn't mean to, Gordon. What's I'm going sorry. on? I'm going away for a while. What? I just need to think things through. I'm sorry, love. Mum? Would you ask Helen to pass the biscuits, please? Oh, I'm sick of this. I'm going. Ah, oh, right. Yeah. Uh, call for you, Helen. Mrs. Tompkins. Could you pass that to Mac, please? <sighs> I 
I'm going back to the doctor. That's nice for you. Come with me. I don't think they can save something that's already dead. Is it still bad out there? Oh, I was thinking of getting a hard hat, actually. It doesn't do, does it? Have the senior partners at each other's throats. Has this kind of thing gone on before? I mean, as bad as this. Oh, well, Helen and Mac have got strong personalities. I can't go on, though. I mean, it's not good for morale, not good for the troops. No, I agree. Perhaps you should get them together, sort it out face to face. I was thinking the same thing, actually. Great minds think alike. You know me, always here to help. Thanks. Look at them. I got the information from the internet. It's what Mum couldn't bring herself to tell us. Support wouldn't have gone amiss. I always support you, Mac, when you're right. I think there are merits on both sides of this argument, and that's why I've called this meeting. Tea? No, thanks. Right, I'll come straight to the point. The atmosphere here today has been appalling. You've both behaved in childish and, dare I say it, unprofessional ways to each other. What? what? Yes, unprofessional kids in a school playground. Is this any way to conduct yourselves in front of junior staff? Well, that's one course. at a time. Good. Helen. For some time now, I've been unhappy with the allocation of admin and patient load I've been expected to take on. Today was the last straw. There was no reason for Mac to pass Mrs. Tompkins on to me, other than he couldn't be bothered to spend the time dealing with her. He saw it was my admin day, and he manipulated the situation accordingly. Now, hold on a Mac. minute. Carry on. This meeting is just another example of how the practice is dominating my life. Instead of finishing the stats, I'm here dealing with a problem that shouldn't have arisen in the first place. I resent this. I was genuinely concerned about Mrs Tomkins and I thought you were the best person for the job. Yes, well, I'm always your first thought when it comes to more work. I don't feel like your partner, I feel like your house officer. <sighs> yes, Katrina. Um, Mrs Tomkins is back asking for Helen. I don't expect Gordon to be at home when I get back. I did try to tell him, but it was as if I'd lost the power to speak. Then I had an accident. It was dreadful. I'm so sorry. But with or without Gordon, I've got to get this sorted. For me. Good for you. I wish I'd felt like this a long time ago. It might not have got to this point. Mm. Now, as I told you earlier, the three main causes of incontinence are natural childbirth, which can damage the pelvic floor muscles. But um, Becky was a caesarean, wasn't she? Uh, pelvic floor surgery. Have you had any? Then I'd plump for the onset of the menopause. Your body stops making oestrogen, and a lack of it can weaken the pelvic muscles. Obviously, we need to get the opinion of a urologist, but if menopause is the cause, then a course of HRT could help reverse the situation. A tablet? Just a tablet? Let's not count our chickens. But your symptoms are indicative of menopause-related bladder changes. So yes, a tablet plus some pelvic floor exercises to strengthen the muscles could be all you need.
Mark! That's the urology referral made. They'll be in touch with a date. Thank you. You're welcome. And if you still feel low and unable to cope, come back and see me. You came? Yeah. I came to listen. To the doctor. And to you. Finished? The paperwork is and so am I. I'm bushed. Off on time, though. Uh, Helen, I've uh, been thinking about what you, what you were saying. <coughs> I can't agree with you. But the fact that you feel put upon means that something is not right. If that is so, then it's up to me to put it right. God knows you've got me out of enough holes lately. And yes, I suppose I have been taking you for granted, and I'm sorry. Truly. Good. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, and we can talk about workload allocation without biting each other's heads off. Ready? Night. I'm glad I caught you before you went home. About earlier. Tomorrow, Jude, tomorrow. Can we leave it for then? Just wanted to apologise. Night, Katrina. What, wait? Not another deity on the hotline, is it? It's your mum. She, uh... Oh, damn, I forgot to ring back. Um, can you tell her I've gone already? I'll call on my way back and surprise her. No, it's about your mum. It's the hospital. Hello? Yes, yeah, speaking. 